If you love history as I do, you've got to believe that somehow looking back into the past can help you. There are lessons to be learned from the way FDR approached that first inaugural of his. You can learn from the mistakes that were made, JFK's mistakes at the Bay of Pigs, what went wrong. When you look back at Lyndon Johnson and how incredibly masterful he was with the Congress, and certainly from Lincoln, there's so much to learn from his temperament, his emotional strengths, and his political skills. Doris Kearns Goodwin is a world-renowned historian and an expert on presidential politics. To see the turnout and the crowd, to see this many people respond, uh, to get to come to see someone of uh, Miss Goodwin's caliber uh, that came to Chattanooga, and it gives me great hope we'll see more of that. Her most recent book is entitled Team of Rivals, The Political Genius of Abraham Lincoln. I was familiar with her work and was excited to see her coming. I had no idea it would be such a reception. There would be three theaters full. Please join me in welcoming Doris Kearns Goodwin. <laughs> what a great, great pleasure to be with you today in light of the historic event that will be taking place a week from now to talk to you about the leadership style of a great historic president, this man that I have lived with for the last 10 years of my life, waking up with him every morning, thinking about him every night when I went to bed, Abraham Lincoln. This man who created the most unusual team in presidential history, comprised of his chief rivals, each one of whom was better educated, more experienced, more celebrated, each one of whom thought he should have been president instead of Abraham Lincoln. A less confident man might have surrounded himself with personal supporters who would not have questioned his authority. When he was asked, why are you doing this? He said, it's very simple. The country is in peril. These are the strongest and most able men in the country. I need them by my side. But perhaps my old friend Lyndon Johnson might have put it in less noble language. Better to have your enemies inside the tent pissing out than outside the tent pissing in. <laughs> so what were the leadership qualities that enabled Lincoln to bring this extraordinary team together to save the Union, win the war, and end slavery? I think that to some extent there are natural gifts that make people better leaders than others. The willingness to listen to other people, perhaps an outgoingness that allows you to care and a curiosity about other people's lives. So that to some extent some of it is inborn. But yes, I do like to think that you can learn. To begin with, it's so often been said that one of the best indicators of later leadership success is the ability to motivate oneself in the face of frustration to withstand adversity and come through trials of fire. Ernest Hemingway once said, the world breaks everyone, but afterward many are strong in the broken places. How true that was for Lincoln. If ambition is simply for the office or the power or the celebrity, then it can be a troubling thing because then that possibility of your sacrificing something that you believe in to get to the next rung is much greater. But in Lincoln's case, and in the case of good ambition, it's to really accomplish something um, so that you can know that you've changed the world in a little bit of a way. Goodwin's book and her, her talk, more importantly about Lincoln, did, her, did a uh, very good job of how, uh, it was just some great lessons you can learn how to deal with people. We always have to learn from our past in order to look to our future, and so I think history is important and Lincoln certainly is an important part of our history as Americans, and I think she's spot on. I think she is. Your generation seems to have become more active than any generation really since the time when I was young in the 1960s. When we think about the economic crisis at home and the multiple crises abroad and two wards that we're fighting, it may seem dangerous, but it also has possibilities for collective action to work together to solve these problems. And life is larger when you care about public issues. When you think about it, situations change over time. The whole country's relationship to the world changes enormously. But you're still dealing with people. You're dealing with people you have to motivate inside your inner circle, dealing with a, a country that you have to continue to have support for your policies. Throughout his presidency, he never lost sight of the people that he represented. He possessed a remarkable ability to communicate his goals to his countrymen with stories, with everyday metaphors, 
nowhere I believe more beautifully than at the second inaugural. Here the North is finally on the eve of winning this long, terrible war, and yet no triumphal message does he deliver. On the contrary, he knows the next task of leadership is to bring the South back into the Union. So the theme of the inaugural was that the sin of slavery was shared by both sides, he said. Both sides prayed to the same God, and as a result, he then ended with what all the words we remember, with malice toward none and charity for all, let us bind up the nation's wounds. Well, it was only six weeks later that his life would come to an end. I was thrilled to find an interview with the great Russian writer Leo Tolstoy, in which Tolstoy told of a, of a trip to a very remote area of the Caucasus, where there were a group of wild barbarians who had never left this part of Russia. They asked him to tell stories of the great men of history. We want to hear about that man who spoke with a voice of thunder, who laughed like the sunrise, who came from that place called America. Tell us of that man. Tell us of Abraham Lincoln. Tolstoy said he was stunned to know that Lincoln's name had reached this remote area. And then in the interview, he said, what made Lincoln so great after all? He wasn't as great a general as Napoleon, not as great a statesman, perhaps, as Frederick the Great. But Tolstoy concluded, and generations of historians would agree, his greatness consisted in the integrity of his character and the moral fiber of his being. Whatever it is, I think, that allows those stories to be told, it's a wonderful feeling. Maybe it's, for those of us still alive, to feel like we won't be forgotten, just as we're now somehow documenting the people who went before us. In the end, I shall always be grateful for this curious love of history, allowing me to spend a lifetime looking back into the past, allowing me to believe that the private people we have loved and lost in our families, and the public figures we have respected in history, just as Abraham Lincoln wanted to believe, really can live on, so long as we pledge to tell and to retell the stories of their lives. Thank you so much for letting me do that with you tonight.